We have a good dear brother, Rodney Powell, with us tonight. He's going to be speaking to all of us, myself included, about some of the Lord's been putting on his heart for a gospel-focused mission and ministry for the homeless here in Auburn. So I'm going to have him come up, and he's just going to share with us, him and his uh, dear brothers in the faith. And I just encourage you, as he shares, be in prayer yourselves about whether or not the Lord would have you partner with them, serve alongside them, or be used in any way in this mission work, because it's of the utmost importance. I know all of us here that live up in Auburn see our camps are growing constantly, it seems, and more and more people are in dire straits, and that's a ministry work, and that's a field ripe for harvest. And so I'm not going to say too much more. I'll leave it to them. I'm going to go ahead and invite Rodney up here. <laughs> All right. Uh, but the cool thing is, it's not about me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, um, well, my name is uh, Rodney Powell, and, and I live in Auburn, California, and I've been in Auburn since 1988. I grew up in Roseville. I've spent most of my life in Placer County. I'm 65 years old. Uh, um, and I'm just going to give you a little, uh, um, we're going to get to the word. I just want to the old man, uh, the guy I was before Jesus saved me, was a horrible man, just uh, a really uh, not somebody you'd want in your neighborhood, uh, and, and that's just who I was. It was bad choices that I made. I got started early in, in life, uh, you know, and, and, and I didn't know why. I didn't know why um, the first time I drank, uh, it was better than any girl I ever kissed. It was better than any home run I ever hit. It was better than any attaboy I ever got. It was better than any star I ever got next to my name. It was the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me the first time I got drunk. And it wasn't until I got saved and I started reading the Bible. It's written in Exodus chapter 20. Uh, uh, the Lord visits the sins of the fathers to the third and the fourth generation. Well, uh, I was a thoroughbred, uh, so to speak, in, in, in these things. Uh, uh, I mean, my family tree was long and deep and hard and of fighters and brawlers and drunkards, and, and, and that was the good stuff. Uh, um, and, and so I, I just said uh, that was, uh, all my heroes uh, were in the bar, uh, they were fighting, they were drinking, uh, uh, and I thought this is what real men did, and because nobody ever showed me any different, you know, and, and, and so I, I, I took off in that direction. Uh, and, and, uh, but anyway, um, uh, everybody has their, their story, but the good thing is I met this guy named Jesus and he changed everything. You know, he just, he really, he gave me a new life, and I can't wait to see him. You know, uh, um, I, I, and uh, I don't tell people the things I did, a lot of the things I did, because nobody even needs to know about that stuff. It's just awful, uh, you know. But the, the, the good side of it is, you know, uh, one, all things work together for the good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. Yeah. And then there's this wonderful thing I have to say, right, because I don't want to act like I'm bragging, um, but Jesus said this, that those who've been forgiven much, love much. And you know what, man? I love that guy so much. If you knew what my life was like before Jesus, I mean, it was, it was a nightmare. It, it, was, it was ugly. It was ugly, and it was, it was black and dark, and I was lost among the lost. I, I'm not kidding you. I was, I was just so lost. And, and then Jesus came into my life, and, and this transformation started to happen, and it didn't happen overnight. Uh, it was like I was this, just this five-gallon bucket of the nastiest, ugliest stuff you could find. And, and he just started pouring clean water in it, you know. He started pouring his word into that bucket. He started pulling the Holy, Holy Spirit into that bucket. He started putting people in my life that, that knew Jesus. And, and, and slowly some of that stuff started loosening up and, and coming out and overflowing, you know. But he's still doing that, and he's still got a good ways to go. Uh, uh, he does. Uh, you know, I'm not uh, done yet or close. Um, um, so uh, when I got saved, uh, it was it was back and forth, running back to the vomit, running back to the you know just like the proverb says, and just like Jesus said, and and that was me, you know. And, and some guys got it the first time, and I I didn't, I I just I just didn't get it, you know. And um, so I have a ministry today uh, to minister to those that didn't get it the first time either. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many Christians there are in homeless camps. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many Christians there are in jail. Uh, I mean, I, I meet them all the time. I, I, I was one, you know, of like for the first eight years or so of my walking with the Lord. I, I, I just, uh, I just uh, had the hardest time. And, 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 and you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm the biggest weakling you ever saw. If I, don't, if I don't stick to Jesus like glue, I mean, 
like glue. From the moment I wake up in the morning, I just cling to him all day long. And, and that's the only way I can make it. Uh, I'm not like some people that can just go to church on Sunday or, or maybe, you know, I, I really am. I have, to, I have to, he's my breath, he's my life, he's, he's my everything. Because I've learned uh, if I don't walk with him like that, I, I guess where I am. You know, uh, some people when they fall, uh, well, they fall back into too much chocolate cake. Uh, when I fall, it, it ain't too much chocolate cake. It's, it's right back to the cesspool he, he, he dug me up out of. And so I, I stick to him like glue. Um, so uh, our message today is, is, a, is a lot. And the Lord does this to me, uh, and, and not uh, more than once, uh, I forgot my notes. <laughs> every, every preacher's, uh, you know, not nightmare, but it's like, <gasps> oh, I can't, I can't. But uh, he's blessed me with this wonderful uh, thing. Um, and it's the gift of knowledge, and, and we're not to boast in gifts. Uh, uh, one man's been given one thing, and another man's been given something else, and it's for the edification of the body. But, you know, I'm going to start with Psalm 1, uh, because uh, this psalm uh, has changed my life, and it will change anybody's life uh, who really listens to it. Um, blessed is the man. Uh, this is New King James. Most everything I know is New King James. I grew up uh, going to church and over here under Pastor Greg Denham, uh, from like 2000 to, you know, for a long time. And he taught out of King James, so I, that's what I learned. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight um, is in the law of the Lord, or uh, more modern vernacular would be uh, his delight is in the word of God. And in his word, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. This is a promise. You know, all of God's promises are yes and amen in Christ. This is a promise to everyone in this room. Uh, the man who meditates on God's word day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither and and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And you know, um, I can't remember where, my mother wrote me a letter one time, and she said, Rodney, and mothers know their sons, mine did anyway, she said, Rodney, you're like a ship without a rudder. That's what she told me, because, you know, wherever the party was or wherever the what it was was, uh, I, I had no root, I had no anchor, I had no, no nothing in my life. And, you know, uh, and I'm only saying this because the world is full of such men and women. Uh, I'm around them all the time. You know, I, I can't pour Jesus into their ear, uh, but I can tell them about Jesus. I, I wish I could save somebody. I really do. Uh, but I can point them to the cross. I can tell them who Jesus is and what he does and, and what he's done for me. And, and you know, uh, that's all God wants us to do. It really is, because that's, that's really all we have. You know, we can feed somebody. We can close somebody. We can take them in. We can uh, 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 heal their wounds. Uh, we can even pay their rent or, or what, you know. But, but the most important thing is, is that somebody knows how to get out of that hole they're stuck in. And it's this guy named Jesus, you know. Uh, um, so this is, uh, uh, this is um, some scriptures that have changed my life, and, and I just want to share them with you, and I hope uh, you don't get uh, bored because it's kind of lengthy. Uh, uh, and, and so um, I've been working on James for, for a, a few years, and, and I'm up to chapter 4, like verse 11. And, but I'm just going to share with you some chapters, if that's all right, because you know, uh, uh, I hear them. I, I, the Lord has me say them out loud all the time, and, and, and blessed is the man who... In his word, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree. And so I, I, I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not an air traffic controller. Uh, I, I, most of the work I d do doesn't, it, it's, most of it's no-brainer stuff. You know, I mow a lot of lawns. I pull weeds. I prune roses. I trim uh, trees, fruit trees this time of year. I, I, I paint. I, I do a lot of things that, um, uh, so, so it allows me to pray. It allows me to meditate on his word. 
And I'm just going to start. Um, and Father God, uh, uh, we've heard these words, I don't know how many times, uh, um, but I just ask uh, um, uh, that we would hear them perhaps in a manner that we've never heard them before or in a more deep uh, manner than we've ever heard them before. And, and just like it says in James, Father, that we would receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save our souls and, and that we would be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. And I, this is my prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, James. You know, he was the half-brother of the Lord, right? James, a bond servant of God and of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, I'm still working on this. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing uh, that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, uh, let him ask of God, who gives, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. And I'm just going to stop for a second here. I, I, when I learned that verse, I started asking God for wisdom because I'm not that smart. I wasn't that smart when I was a kid. I, on my best day in school, I, I might have been in the middle of the class, and, and I knew it. Uh, God made us all different. I was never a doctor material or, or anything. Uh, and, and that's cool. That's how God made me. Um, but uh, the promise is, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all, liberally. He's not tight. Without, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. So I said, Lord, I want wisdom. Teach me wisdom. I, I, I need wisdom. And, and, and the, the promise is, if I ask you, you'll give me wisdom. And So you know what he told me? One day he goes, Rodney, I want you to start reading Proverbs. And I want you to read a chapter every day. And I'm going to give you wisdom. And you know what? I've been reading a chapter of Proverbs every day. And I'm, I'm boasting in the Lord. I, I, I'm not trying to make myself look good. But I just, I'm just, what he's, what he's did, I asked him for wisdom. He goes, I want you to read a chapter every day. I've been doing it for years. And, and, uh, and guess what? Uh, man, I tell you what, um, you read God's word, you, you receive God's word, you start applying it to your life, and, and, you, and you don't fall into those same pitfalls that you used to fall into, and you don't stumble like you used to. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, to continue in James, uh, um, let the lowly man glory in his exaltation. The lowly man. We're going to talk about the lowly man some tonight. Let the lowly man glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation. For as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass, its flower falls, and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is led astray by his own desires and enticed. And when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, who is without variation or shadow of turning, of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And so th that's one of those gospel verses. How, how, did, how did we come into God's kingdom of his own will? He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might become a first fruits of his creatures. You know, Jesus said a, a sower went out to sow and as he sowed. And so, uh, hey, let's sow, let's sow because you know what? That's how people enter into into God's kingdom, it really is. Uh, somebody said one time to me, and uh, 
I've heard it more than a few times, and, and, and I don't like it. Someone, someone told me, preach the gospel, and if you have to, use words. <laughs> well, that's not how Paul got stoned, <laughs> by being a nice guy. He was preaching the gospel. And you know, and, and the gospel is offensive. It's an offense to certain people, and, 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 and you will find that out. You know, uh, Another thing, uh, um, I'll tell you, uh, if you ever wondered if there was a devil, go out and start preaching the gospel. <laughs> you'll, you'll find out. There, you have an enemy, and you'll find out like ASAP. And, uh, and, and I found that out the hard way. You know, nobody really clued me in on that. I wonder why everything was upside down, and, and, and I didn't know what was going on. And, 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 and the Lord goes running because uh, someone's trying to take you out. And, you know, um, and the brighter uh, you shine for Jesus, uh, guess what? The more this... Uh, person is going to, and his minions are going to try to take you out, and that's why we have on, the, you know, the whole armor of God that, so that in the evil day, you know what, there's going to be some days where all you can do is, is stand. So that in the evil day, you may be able to stand, and after having done all, after having done all, it's just to stand. You know, and those days aren't fun, and they're hard, but you know what, if, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, and you do what he tells you, and you've got your armor on, You'll, you'll be able to stand. Um, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, who is without variation or shadow of turning. Uh, he's not one way, one way, one day and another way the next. Um, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my brethren, uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and, and slow to wrath. And uh, you know, I heard one time somebody said, we got two ears and, and one mouth for a reason. We're supposed to be listening a lot more than you know, we're talking. Uh, that's not a scripture, but uh, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, uh, put away all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Peter wrote in 1 Peter, uh, at the end of chapter 1, he said, uh, um, put away all anger and wrath and clamor and malice and evil speaking, put them away, and desire the pure milk of the word by which you may grow thereby. James says, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. And so if you ever want to know what kind of man you are or woman, open the Bible and, and Jesus will teach you and he'll tell you. Uh, uh, but, uh, but if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and continues in it, in his law he meditates day and night. Uh, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water uh, that brings forth its fruit in its season, and whatever he does shall prosper. And so that's some Old Testament and, and some New Testament, and, and they're the same. Uh, they really are. Uh, um, <clears throat> if anyone among you thinks that he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue, this one's religion is useless. Wow. Wow. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. To keep oneself unspotted from the world. You know, even as Christians, uh, sin separates us. It does, you know. Uh, I know when I, when I got my ducks in a row with Jesus, man, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm doing what he asked me to do and I'm, I'm spending time with him in the Word. I'm spending time in prayer. It's, there's this wonderful, beautiful intimacy that we get to have with him. And, and Jesus said as much. You know, he said, 
He said, if you keep my commandments, or if you, you will abide in my love. Not just know about it, not just believe in it. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And, and so when we're cutting corners or fudging or not paying our taxes or, or, or whatever it is, you know, we, I don't know about you, but I, I know it, I feel it, that, that beautiful, sweet intimacy that, that makes life worth living, it just isn't quite the same. You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> uh, I, and I know I'm preaching to the choir. I, I'm going to go on. Um, so chapter 2 is, is this, and um, um, this, uh, uh, these words have changed my life, and, and they'll change anybody's life uh, uh, who believes them. And, and walks in them. Um, my brethren, uh, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one in the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place, and say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has not God made the poor of this world rich in faith? I love words. I love God's word. And, and, and I love how God has made the poor rich. Isn't that amazing that God has made the poor rich in faith? Um, but you've dishonored the poor man. Uh, do not the rich oppress you? Do they not drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you do well. But if you show partiality, you sin and are convicted by the law as a transgressor. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he's guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there's one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? So you see then that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So then a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Uh, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And you know, um, I hope I'm not wearing you out. Uh, sometimes uh, too much scripture can be heavy. One time I was, uh, um, I was a pastor of a little church. Uh, we used to meet, uh, it was called Felony Field. It was out there on, uh, on Bell Road, right at DeWitt. It was, this was like 2015. And I was going to this uh, little church on, on Luther Road called Sarah Grace Fellowship. And, and one day, just, just like I'm talking to you, uh, one day the Lord said, Rodney, 
I want you to take your guitar and your Bible, and I want you to go out to that homeless camp, and I want you to start a church service. It's all right, Lord. And uh, John, uh, he happened to help. Uh, he came along, and and, uh, and a couple other guys, and and uh, so we went out to this field, and we started a church service, and like nobody came, you know. And and we'll run. The Lord goes, well, "Why don't you ask him to come?" Okay, Lord. So, <laughs> so I start going to each tent, right? And they're like, uh, "Who are you, man? You know, uh, what are you doing here?" And uh, uh, well, we're uh, uh, you know we believe in Jesus, and we're going to have a church service. Would you like to come? No. And so we did this for weeks, and and, uh, and then one day the Lord says, "Why don't you go uh, to McDonald's and get some breakfast sandwiches, and go get some donuts, and go get some milk?" So we did. And guess what? We started going around to each camp, and and they're like, "Who are you?" Oh, wait a minute. Hi, how you doing? You know, they saw the food. Uh, they saw the, uh, uh, it, it's amazing. And you know, the, the scripture is, and it's so beautiful. It's Proverbs. I don't know the chapter. I don't know the address, but a gift makes room for a man and has brought men before kings. You know, you can make room for yourself in somebody's life. Uh, it, it's a great segue. It's a great way to open a door, you know, uh, to actually uh, address somebody and, and to ascribe to them value and dignity and worth and, and honor, you know, that, that you would go buy food and, and bring it to them. And, and so this went on for a little while, and, and now, now we're like, we're in. We're, we're, we're in the car, right? We're, hey, how you doing? You know, if people are talking, they're loosening up. Some are starting to come to church, and now we pull up Sunday mornings, and everybody's waiting for us. <laughs> Breakfast is coming. And, and so uh, we started this church service, and then... Um, that was in like uh, March or April of uh, 2016. So we're meeting in this. We had we got wound up with Bibles, songbooks, chairs. We're, we're meeting in this field, and you know five are coming, ten, fifteen are coming, and, and and some other church folks are coming too. They want to be a part of this, you know, and and uh, um, and then it gets to be uh, August, September, October, and, and it's going to start raining one day. So we're, we're praying, Lord, uh, that you would tuck us in somewhere. <clears throat> The first day it rained that year on a Sunday, we're in the Grange Hall having church. He did it, man. He, he gave me a key, opened the door. We got permission, uh, insurance, the, the whole the whole deal to do this thing, you know. And and we're having church. And and so these folks, uh, we got the heaters on. They're bringing in wet blankets, laying them over blankets, and and we're having church. And then then we kept feeding breakfast. They have a kitchen there. And uh, I better watch the clock because I can go on for a long time talking about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, so uh, like Jesus is, is is rocking the house. I mean, he really is, you know. Uh, and, and I want to share this with you because um, I learned, <laughs> don't ever try to teach something that God hasn't given you. All I can share is my experience and, and the scriptures and how he's worked them into my life and worked them through my life. Uh, there's a scripture and it's, um, I'm going to read it to you. It's Mark. And it's, it was a, a life-changing scripture for me. I believe it's chapter 5. And it's something that I need to work on all the time. You know what? I already told you I had some notes, but I left them at home. Did I tell you that? Yeah, yeah all right. I had it all nice, pretty thing all laying down. I even had some Greek and some all that stuff. And the Lord goes, uh-uh. <laughs> uh, you're just going to go like this. So I am. Mark chapter 5, um, excuse me, Mark chapter 4, and in verse, uh, i got to put on my uh, stronger glasses, um, in verse chapter 4, uh, and you know what, I don't fast very often, uh, I, I still don't, but every time I do, God just blesses me so much, I mean, he just does, it's like, it's like if there was a God volume knob, when I fast, he, he turns it up from five to six or seven or eight or, or nine. And, and if you fast and you, you pray and you spend time with the Lord, you spend time in his word, all these things you used to scratch your head about all of a sudden start becoming clear. You know, the Bible says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. And, and you know, uh, 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 that's, it, that's not mandatory, but it's, it's one of the beautiful ways to draw near to God is, is to just shut the world off. You know, it, it, something happens spiritually. It really does when you fast. Uh, God honors that, you know. Jesus spoke about it. He said, uh, and he didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. <laughs> uh, uh, don't make a long face, you know. So 
like the hypocrites do, then everybody knows they're fast. And he said, they've already received their reward. Their reward. He said, when you fast, uh, put oil on your head. That was what the custom in those days. And, and don't let anybody know. And, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. He'll reward you openly. And he did. Uh, he did. And I just want to read this. Uh, um, Mark chapter 4, then he said to them, and I pray that we all do this uh, even tonight, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Now, uh, some people think I'm crazy. Uh, God speaks to me all the time. Uh, he really does. I'm, I'm just in constant communion with him, uh, always. Uh, Lord, what do I do now? Lord, what do I say? Lord, uh, uh, should I talk to that man? Should I not talk to that man? And, and the man just said something. Now, Lord, am I supposed to respond? You know, he, he really, he got me there. It, 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 it took a long time. But, you know, the Bible says we're supposed to pray without ceasing. You know, and, and to just have an ongoing conversation with the God of the universe is, is absolutely incredible. And you know what? And sometimes he speaks to me. Sometimes he shows me something. And I go like this. Um, at, but uh, take heed to what you hear, for in the measure you use, it will be given to you. And to those who hear, uh, more will be given. Uh, um, so uh, this is one of my favorite stories. Uh, it's an older story. And, um, and, and the Lord's even talked to me. He goes, how come you don't have any good modern Jesus stories, Rodney? Oops. Well, probably because I haven't been taking heed to what I hear. But I was in, I was in an AA meeting one time. I used to go to AA meetings. I... Uh, I went to a lot of them before I got saved, and, and it's a great place to go if you have a drinking problem and you need some help. Uh, you'll get a lot of support there. Uh, uh, Jesus is my everything today, so I, I, I don't. Uh, it, it worked for me for as long as it worked for me, and and, and that's all I did to say about that. <clears throat> but I was at an AA meeting, and and there was this guy. Uh, this guy wound up laying on the floor, sobbing, and it's uh, it's. Uh, that's the only time I think I've ever seen a grown man laying on the floor sobbing, and so it was a strange thing. It really was, and nobody knew how to act or what to do. And so uh, the meeting got over. There was probably 30 guys there, and, whew, and everybody made a wide berth around this guy. And, and the Lord says, he goes, Rodney, go talk to that guy. I'm like, what? Come on, Lord. He goes, Rodney, go talk to that guy. I said, all right, Lord, what do I say? And he goes, well, just ask him how he's doing. I said, well, how are you doing, brother? Not good, you know? And uh, um, I, the whole time I'm going, Lord, what do I say? Lord, what do I say? What do I say? And he tells me, he goes, ask him if he wants to go to breakfast. I don't have any money. I said, Lord, I don't have any money. He said, Rodney, ask him if he wants to go to breakfast. I said, brother, would you like to go to breakfast? He said, yes. So we got up, and uh, we're walking out of the AA all. AA Hall, it's on Palm Avenue, and, and so we walk out past Reby's, uh, and then we're walking down Palm, we're going to go to the Breakfast Club, where Save Mart is, it used to be the Breakfast Club there, it's called Nancy's or something now, so I'm walking with this guy, I got no money, and we're going to breakfast, and, and I'm just, oh Lord, what do I do, Lord, what do I do, <laughs> and he just says, just keep walking, Rodney, just keep walking, Rodney, so I kept walking, and all of a sudden I look up and I see this girl, she wasn't a girl, this woman that, that I went to church with, and she's coming the other way. So we're, we're right in front of the statues. And she goes, where are you guys going? So we're going to breakfast. And boom, just like lightning. Here's this money in her hand. And she sticks it right into my hand. I'm like, oh, Lord, you are so cool, right? And so we go to the breakfast club. And we have breakfast. And I get to tell this guy about Jesus. And, you know, and I'm saying this because you know what? Um, often when God calls us or asks us to do something, it's like, How's that going to work? I want to know what's around the corner and what's around the next corner before I take the first step. And he goes, no, Rodney, that's not walking by faith. And, 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 and I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. But he says to do something, and it looks like impossible. But you know what? Jesus told me this. Take heed to what you hear. And so I fasted those two days, and he gave me that scripture. You know what he told me? He said, Rodney, he said, all of heaven is poised. All of heaven is poised waiting for somebody to say, yes, Lord. Waiting for somebody to say, yes, Lord. 
And you know, uh, I don't like doing that anymore. I still do it. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't. And when he says to do something, I, all these, the first thing that goes through my mind is, that's not going to work. I don't know if you guys, I know you know what I'm talking about. But you know what? Every time I do, every time I say, yes, Lord, even if it looks like no way, no how, not today, things just unfold right, 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 right before you. That's, God has taught me that. He really has. He goes, do you trust me, Rodney? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Then, then, then listen to me and, and do what I tell you. And, and, and you will see miracles. You'll, I've seen miracles. I, I've, I've witnessed them. You know, I, 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 I've never seen miracles in church. I've never seen miracles in the foyer. But I'll tell you what, I've seen miracles on the mission field. Uh, when we were in that Grange Hall and we were cooking and serving lunch, uh, my sister and I, we stayed up one night. We made enchiladas. And we made 91 of them because there was usually 40 people that came. And anyway, that's so many fit in these, these three pans. And so I counted them up and okay, we got two apiece for 40 people. Well, guess what happens? <laughs> I go to church on Sunday, I look up, and the line's out the door. <laughs> Everybody's nightmare, right, is to not have enough food. And so, uh, so uh, I was going to do the beans. Wayne was going to do the enchiladas. And, and the Lord says, tell Wayne to do the beans. Okay, I said, Wayne, would you do the beans? And, and the Lord goes, watch this, Rodney. He goes, don't serve two enchiladas. I want you to cut it in squares just like it was an enchilada casserole. I said, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll do what you tell me. And I cut those, uh, those squares up. I cut them in like three inches squares. And by the time they got to the plate, they were four inch squares. And it wasn't because it was falling apart. He, he just wanted to show me what he could do. And he showed me. And I'm, t I'm telling you the truth. Everybody in that line went through and had enchiladas. Half of them came back for seconds and, and people took to go boxes. Um, true story. Uh, uh, there was another group that used to go to the Grange Hall. But this, this is feeding the poor, and this is witnessing and ministering uh, to people that are broken and hurting and, and don't know where to go or what to do. And, 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 that, and that's how it happens. That's how it happens for me, and that's how it happens for a lot of people. There was another group that used to come in on Sunday evenings every other week, uh, Randy and Regina, and they did the same thing. They, they fed the poor, and, and I used to help them sometimes, and, and Regina goes, Rodney, pray. We don't have enough mashed potatoes. And so we got in the kitchen and we prayed. And I stood there and I watched those mashed potatoes. And I watched, she just kept filling those plates up and those mashed potatoes did not go down. <laughs> just boom, 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 boom. Uh, because uh, she was doing the Lord's work, you know. Um, there's something, uh, <clears throat> where did I stop at? I stopped at uh, the end of chapter one. Oh, uh, so chapter three goes like this. Uh, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. Uh, if anyone doesn't stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole bodies. Look also at ships, although they are so large, and are driven by fierce winds. They are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth both fresh water and bitter? Does a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt, water, and fresh from the same opening. I might not have that perfect. Um, and then it goes on to this. Um, and this, this is something, uh, 
I hope every one of us asked the Lord about because he has me praying this on a regular basis. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good works that his, let him show by good works, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if there is bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not lie and boast against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For wherever envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every form of evil are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without hypocrisy and without partiality. For the fruits of righteousness are sown in peace by those who make peace. And that's James chapter 3. And I'm, I'm going to stop there with James. Um, um, Jesus, actually Paul prayed this, and, and uh, uh, this is um, Philippians 1, nine, And this is Paul's prayer, and, and, and just to stay on the topic of, of, of good fruits and that, Paul says, in this I pray, that your love for one another may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Jesus Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ. You know, uh, so we, we need to learn how to love. The Bible says we need to learn how to love one another. Uh, uh, you know, I thought it was a feeling or, 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 or some strong form of like or something, but you know what God has taught me? And because this is what the Bible has taught me. Uh, um, First John, um, and I forget the address, uh, but you guys will, will recognize this first. Uh, how can you say that you love God whom you can't see if you don't love your brother whom you can see? And so uh, uh, that, that's what it boils down to. Uh, it really does. You know, what does love look like? Uh, um, God has taught me, uh, you know, Jesus said, you, you fed me when I was hungry. You, you gave me something to drink when I was thirsty. You, you took me in when I was a stranger. You clothed me when I was naked. You come to visit me when I was sick, and you visited me when I was in prison. And they said, Lord, uh, when did we see you like that? And, and we all know the rest of it, right? He said, if you've done this to the least of these, my brethren, you've done this to me. And I just want you to know that... Uh, those beautiful people that uh, that we get to drive by and sometimes pretend we don't see uh, is the least. Uh, and you know, um, I'm very blessed. I, I'm so blessed I can hardly stand it. Uh, God has given me a, it's my ministry uh, um, um, because that's me. Um, um, my grandfather died asphyxiated on his vomit drunk. My grandmother died of sclerosis of the liver. Uh, my Uncle Tom drank himself to death. My Uncle Larry drank himself to death. My brother drank himself to death. And, and man, I was, I was going down that hill fast and throw some dope in that methamphetamine, and, and I was picking up speed, and, and, and I would be in the same car and in the same boat if I hadn't met this guy named Jesus. And, and you know what? If it hadn't been for a friend of mine that, uh, that took me to church, if it hadn't been for other guys that witnessed to me along the way and... and um, there was a guy uh, named Harry Roach. Some of you know Harry Roach. Uh, uh, there's, uh, like, like the Lord said of Job, there's, there's no one like him. <laughs> I've never met another man like this guy. Uh, he, about a few weeks before he died, uh, he was, a, uh, um, he was a, a small, a statured man, and he was in his 90s, and, and he, he pulled me down, and he kissed me on the cheek. And he held my hands tightly, and he pulled me to himself like he always did, and he said, Rodney, he said, you're my glory. And at first, uh, and when he said that, I didn't know what he was saying, and, and the Lord confirmed that. Uh, he said, uh, the Lord said, Rodney, you're Harry's glory. And uh, Harry had told me just a little earlier than that, uh, he started praying for me in 1986. I got saved in 1998. 
Harry, I didn't even know Harry. Uh, my brother used to go to church, and my brother must have brought me to church. Well, he did bring me to church two or three times, and, and if, if you ever met Harry, you'd never forget him. And so I must have met Harry and, and didn't remember it, but Harry remembered it, and he prayed for me for 12 years before I ever got saved. And, and then when I got saved, uh, he poured himself into me. He did. Uh, he showed me what it looks like uh, to walk and talk like a man of God he, because he was a man of God. And, 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 and uh, um, when I was in jail, because I was a backslider, he would come see me. And I was, the last time I was in jail, uh, I don't know how he knew, but I'm in this tank, and, and all of a sudden I hear, is Rod Powell in this tank? And I recognize the voice. <laughs> and I looked, and there's Harry. Man, it wasn't his night to be in to, to give the Bible study. He just came in, and he walked up to me, and he, and he grabbed me, and he hugged me, and he just started shaking. He said, Lois died yesterday. His wife... It died the day before, and um, he came to see me in jail, and 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 just to hug me and to encourage me, and and you know, um, um, love uh, goes a long way. So it really does. You know, uh, you can, because um, I used to preach at people. Uh, one guy told me one time uh, uh, I was so zealous for Jesus, but I didn't know I was missing this thing called love. And this guy goes, Rodney, you can't tie a Bible on the end of a baseball bat and start wailing on people. And, and he goes, you ain't going to, it don't work. And, and the Lord, I had to learn this thing about, about love, you know. Uh, um, and I'm going to paraphrase this one because I don't know it perfect. Um, Paul said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels uh, and have not love, I'm just a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. In other words, pretty much get out of here, you know. It's, who wants, da, da, like you ever see those little monkeys that beat the drums, the wind up ones? You know what? Uh, Christians without love, uh, that's what we are, I think. I think that's what Paul's trying to say. He said, and though I have all knowledge and know all mysteries, I can quote the Bible backwards, you know, and, and, and though I have faith with which to move mountains uh, and have not love, I am nothing, nothing. Uh, um, and so I, I just... Uh, um, there's a group of us we pray uh, once a month. Uh, well, actually, we meet every week at Sarah Grace at 6 a.m., but then we come back once a month at uh, 8 p.m. And, and pray for a rescue mission. I'm going to finish with this. Uh, I keep saying I am going to finish with this. Um, I was an IV drug addict when I was 18, and just just awful, man. I did awful things. And uh, uh, so I'm, uh, I walked out of a, a drug house in Roseville way too early, and I got in the car, shouldn't have been there. And I'm, and I'm driving down Vernon Street in Roseville, and a cop pulls up next to me, and I'm, I'm just coming unglued, man. I, I'm, I'm still trying to settle down from doing a big shot of cocaine. And, and, and I got all flipped out, and I, and I put the car in reverse, and when the light turned red, I went backwards, right? That cop looked at me, and so I'm in the back of the car. <laughs> so he takes me up to Auburn, uh, and I got a warrant for my arrest like I usually did. I, I was always doing a meltdown when I saw a cop because I always had warrants. And so so I, I do my time in Auburn, and, and then I got a warrant in Sacramento County. So I, I go down to Sacramento County, and I do my time. And I got a warrant in Eureka County. And so I get, so this uh, uh, the sheriff's officer drove all the way from Eureka. It's like three and a half, four hours, right, to pick me up. And I get up there, and, and uh, uh, I check into the jail, and they, they, they had uh, court that afternoon. So I stand in front of the judge. He looked at me and he goes, you know what? You've done enough time. Why don't you just get out of here? And I said, all right. And so I left. I'm in Eureka in the wintertime. I got no coat. I got arrested in Roseville. Uh, I don't know how many long before that. And uh, so I walk out of the jail in Eureka County. This is 1986 or 87. No cell phones, no nothing, you know. Uh, so I got no money anyway, so I, I don't know what to do. I, didn't, I never lived in Eureka County. I got arrested on a fishing trip years ago for stealing. Anyway, uh, so I don't know what to do. I can't call anybody, and I don't know what to do. And so I found a covered bus bench, and I'm sitting on this covered bunch, bus bench, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? And there's a pizza parlor right there, and there's a dumpster behind the pizza parlor. I'm thinking, man, uh, I haven't eaten anything. Uh, you know, uh, I've been traveling all the way from... Sacramento to the courthouse. I'm going to go jump in that dumpster and see if I can find me some pizza. Well, this guy walks by, 
I'm so desperate. I said, hey, you know what, brother? I said, I told him my story. And I said, what would you do if you were me? He goes, I'd go to the mission. See, there was a mission about two blocks from there. And I didn't know that. And, and you know what? I walked up to that door and they said, come on in, man. And I ate dinner and I stayed there two days in a, in a rescue mission in Eureka, California. And, you know, I don't remember the sermon. I remember I had to sit and listen to a sermon and eat dinner and sleep in bed. But that was the sermon. That was the sermon. Um, they fed me when I was hungry. They took me in when I was a stranger. And, and, and I'm, I'm praying and hoping uh, that God uh, provides a place like that in, in Auburn, California for, for such knuckleheads. Well, I shouldn't call anybody that, but, you know, people that just uh, don't have a clue. Um, the Lord told me one time, he said, Rodney, if you were walking around circles out in the field and you didn't know your left hand from your right hand, don't you wish somebody would come up and help you? And I said, yes, Lord. And of course, you know what he said then? He goes, you see that guy over there? <laughs> but uh, um, so that whole thing about love your neighbor, I thought as long as I wasn't breaking your window and cussing at him, I was loving my neighbor. And he goes, no, I'm going to show you what love your neighbor looks like. Um, I get to go to the rescue mission in Sacramento and the one in Marysville. And uh, um, um, Dave get, and his family uh, helped me at the shelter. And we cook and serve dinner at the shelter once a month and, and, and share what we got with people that are lost and don't have anything. And I'll tell you, it's the most beautiful, beautiful thing to do. And I just, I'm, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> I went way too long. Uh, Jorge, um, would, you, would you like to share a couple minutes, Jorge? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, God bless you guys. Are you sure? I don't, I don't feel worthy coming up here, honestly. Um, I, I, what, what could I say after Brother Rodney up here? Um, but all I got to say is that I love this man. Um, the way that I found him, uh, it's a long story, but I'm going to cut it really short. 2009, I uh, should have been divorced. Uh, marriage just was off the walls, um, ego pride, uh, just life. Um, and uh, so my wife starts praying, and literally, uh, she just said, God, I'm looking for you. Um, where are you? I need help. And as soon as she said this prayer, you know, somebody knocks on our door. And so uh, my wife opens the door, man standing in front says, hey, let me pray for you so you can find your way. 2009, so her faith just explodes. She starts seeking God like crazy. I'm going to work maybe 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week. She's praying that I may join in what is a marriage and fatherhood. I had a two-year-old daughter and a six-month-old son uh, at the time. And so uh, um, she ends up showing me what true love is by the way that she acted toward me. I'm coming home either drunk um, or on other substance, and yet she still has my dinner. She still had my clothes ready. I was always looking for an argument just to basically get out of the house for a few days. That's how my relationship was. So fast forward, next thing you know, I just didn't see it was fun anymore. I saw myself coming home angry, bitter. She's just with this face, a radiant light, just telling me what she's reading in scripture, how God's talking in her life. And I came to a point where I just said, I want that. I'm done. I'm tired. I started substance abuse since I was 13 when I got married at 22. And then I was just falling apart at 24. I mean, I, I, just, I just basically said, I want what you got. You're happy, even though you're married to a bitter man. You're, you're, you're joyful every time I come home and I'm just angry. I said, you know, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. And so that started our journey. Um, we end up, uh, I end up having a God encounter January 5th, 2010. Never looked back. I gave my life to Christ. That was the last day I used any type of drug or substance until now. And so fast forward from 2010 to about 2018, we're in a small church in Lincoln. Um, we're in every ministry. We're deacon. I'm deacon. 
Uh, my wife's a minister of the kids. I'm, I'm youth group leader. We're just bouncing off the walls, doing whatever we can for God. Well, next thing you know, we find out the church moving to Yuba City. I don't feel led to go up there. Uh, I ran into a brother, um, a godly brother, who is funny. I said godly. Oh, he is godly, but I just said, brother, can you pray for him? And he says, no. Um, but I know why he said no. Um, he says, I want you to go to somebody that is always praying. He's always praying. He's walking and he's praying. And so, uh, okay, I said, where can I meet him? He says, you can meet him on Bell Road. His church service starts at 10 o'clock. He feeds the homeless. And so uh, I got my kids up early that day. We're all suited up. We're ready to go. I go into this church off of Bell Road, which nothing but homeless outside. And I walk in, and my brother Rodney's just sitting there, just exactly what he just did right now. He was doing the exact same thing, and I was just in awe. And I said, hey, brother, after the church service, can you pray for me because I don't know what to do? My church that had been there, baptized, everything is going to Yuba City. I don't feel led to go. And he goes, yeah, brother, but I'm kind of hurried, but can we go outside and go pray? I said, yes. We walk outside, and uh, when we walk outside, my wife starts running out towards me and says, this is the man who prayed for me in 2009 before we got divorced. So she starts bawling. My brother Rodney starts bawling. I mean, it was just an explosion. I had been looking for this man for at least eight years, trying to find out if he was real. Because my wife said, a construction worker, tattoos, blue eyes, about 6'3", six, 6'5". Six, I'm running up to guys saying, hey, you prayed for my wife. The guys would say, I don't even know God. So I, would, I, I just thought for a second, you know what, God, you sent an angel, and I'm never going to be able to see this man, but thank you. And now all of a sudden, I'm standing in the midst of this guy. It blew me away. I just asked him, what do you do here? He says, well, I feed the homeless. It's about 60 to 70 people. And I said, who helps you? And he says, nobody. Light bulb. Called up my pastor right away. Hey, I know where God is going to lead me. And I told him right away. He wasn't happy. But yet, the decision I made was the best one that I had ever made. And I had seen, and I keep on seeing what God does throughout just serving the people that are in need. Um, and honestly, I could say, and kind of guilty, but I could say this, that I hated homeless people. I really did. But when I got to serve homeless is when my religious eyes fell off, and God really ta ta uh, taught me what love really is. And uh, my life has been changed ever since, honestly, 2018, when I started serving the homeless. I thought with my knowledge and what I had done, I thought I was going to be able to give the homeless something. And honestly, they gave me much more than what I could bring to the table. And uh, I couldn't be more grateful to stand next to this man and serve. And now, with the pride and joy, I love meeting these homeless people out in the street, know them by name, they know me by name, and I love it. it it's a joy for me to be able to walk up to them, give them a hug, give them five, 20 bucks, take them out to eat. It, it, it's, it, it's a pride. I don't know what it is. It's, a pride. it's like I'm seeing Christ. I, I, I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, honestly, I just want to really keep it short. Thank you. All right. We have one more gentleman to come up. I'm going to have John come up here and close this out for us here. Okay, uh, I'm going to make this really short. I really like the story of Rodney being up in Eureka in the rain, just being let out of court, and not knowing where to go or what to do. And I think if that happened here in the Auburn area, and we walk by homeless people all the time, time and they were to ask us, what are we going to do? Where do we go? What would you say to do? And I wish I could say, you can go to the shelter. I'll take you there. But we don't have a shelter. We don't have a gospel Christian shelter. And our vision is that that would happen. And we need your prayer, and we need your support. 
We're on the internet if you want to look at our website. It's auburngospelmission.org. We haven't done anything, but we have a website. No money. <laughs> but we need your prayer. Absolutely. Well, praise the Lord. Well, we did go a little long, but I had no intention of quelling what the Spirit was doing. So I want to encourage you all. We're going to close out in a, a song of worship for the Lord together. But I just really want to encourage you all. I know some of us have kids we've got to pick up after uh, worship closes out here. But if you have the time, even after you get your kids and come back in, I just want to invite anyone that wants to come and gather after a time of worship. Let's just gather up here in the front few rows and just have a time of mutual prayer because nothing is going to happen without prayer. The Lord wants to invite us into that time. We need to seek Him because if anything's going to happen, it needs to be in His will, and we need to seek His will in prayer. So why don't we all stand together, and we'll close out with a song of worship. And then if you're so inclined, we'll be down front here praying.